Hey, it's Dave with AlexFergus.com, back with another video for you guys today. And today, we're gonna to be talking about Apple's new smartwatch, the Series 6 Apple Watch. I'm actually wearing it right now. Now, I wear a ton of different wearables. I've got an Aura Ring, I've got the BioStrap Evo, and now I've been using the Apple Watch 6. What makes the Apple Watch 6 appealing? It can track a bunch of different biometrics, just like the Aura Ring and the BioStrap Evo. But is it something that you really might want to consider if you already have an Aura Ring or a BioStrap, or possibly a Whoop or a Fitbit? That's a little bit tougher to answer. So I'm gonna try and walk through some of the pros, some of the cons that I found when using the Apple Watch Series 6, and hopefully I can help you make a better decision about whether or not the Apple Watch 6 is something you might wanna consider looking into for yourself. As you may have heard, Apple has finally put a blood oxygen sensor in the Apple Watch 6. What that means is that now you can take blood oxygen samples um, anytime you want on demand or the watch will automatically take those samples about every 30 minutes from my testing. Now I've gone through my data and it looks to be about every 30 minutes normally if there's no movement detected. The same thing can be said for the BioStrap which also takes blood oxygen levels. I've noticed that my passive blood oxygen readings normally happen overnight. So the blood oxygen sensor is definitely an added bonus and something that Apple probably should have included back in the Series 4 or Series 5, but I'm glad to see it now with the Series 6. Another new feature that Apple has put into the Apple Watch is an always on, as a brighter always on screen. Now they've had the always on screen for a little while now, but now they've made it about 20% brighter. Now, in full honesty, I don't have a Series 5 Apple Watch to compare the brand new Series 6 to, to put them side by side and actually see if it looks brighter, but I will say it's, it's bright enough when you leave it on the always-on setting. It, under strong sunlight, you might have a little bit of a harder time seeing the always-on screen without actually touching, tapping, or raising the watch to get the watch to wake up. There's a bunch of new bands that they came out with for the Series 6. That's another pro that I think uh, you might want to consider. They have the solo loop band and the solo braided loop band now. And these are made out of a single piece of silicone and the user can simply stretch it, slide it on, kind of like one of those Livestrong bracelets. If you remember those silicone bracelets that were all the rage a few years ago. So when I got my Series 6, I decided to, to stick with a regular style band. And in fact, I'll show you my, my watch. I have the Nike edition, which is, it's not anything fancy, it's just, um, it comes with a couple of different strap options and it comes with a couple of different uh, watch faces available um, that I think you can probably pick up anyway if you get any of the different Apple watches. But it does come with those already on the watch. Um, but I liked the strap and that's really why I went with the Nike edition. But here is, I got mine in um, silver with the gray Nike Edition sport, uh, sport Band, and it's black and gray. I, I like the way it looks. Um, that's mainly the main reason why I got it. I decided to go with the smaller of the two, and I'll talk about that in a little bit about the pricing. Um, I had the very first Apple Watch Apple ever created. This, they actually now call it the Series Zero, not the Series One. Um, I was an early adopter. Um, I picked it up. And I wore it for, for quite a while, for probably about six months on a daily basis, or I tried to. Here's the rub. The original Apple Watch, now known as Series Zero, had a lot of problems. Um, it wasn't very water resistant. It could take a light splash possibly, but you couldn't wear it in the shower. You couldn't swim with it. Um, if you went out hiking or camping and it rained, it was not a good thing for that watch at all. Um, the battery life, wasn't the greatest. The processor was the big thing for me. It was very slow. Apps would just kind of freeze and hang and it just, it didn't seem ready for prime time. It definitely felt like a product that in the future I could see myself getting into. And so I kind of waited on the sidelines and 
every iteration of the Apple Watch that came out, Apple kept tweaking it, fixing it, adding new features, boosting performance, getting better battery life. And it wasn't until they included the blood oxygen sensor in the Series 6 that I said, you know, I'm really curious to see if the performance is there, the battery life is there, and now finally it's got enough sensors and features in it could it possibly replace all the different wearables that I'm wearing and just consolidate it all into one? Well, it's definitely faster. It's faster than the Series 5, but only by maybe a little bit. Um, I think most people um, aren't going to really notice a, a big difference between a Series 5 and a Series 6. Now, if you're jumping from, like, from what my case, a Series 0 into a Series 6, yeah, I think you're probably going to... I mean, it's like night and day to me. It's it's almost like it's a different piece of technology altogether. Another thing to consider with the Apple Watch that you're not gonna find on Aura or Biostrap is that it fits into a large ecosystem of expandable, expandable um, applications. The same goes with exercise apps um, and even sleep apps, and we'll get into that in just a minute. You know, it's more than just a biomet biometric and fitness tool. The watch itself now is capable of you know doing handoff with your music to your phone and vice versa you can text message on it there's definitely been some times when i've got my hands full and i can't grab my phone or i'm cooking and i've got stuff all over my hands and i don't want to have to wash my hands or wipe my hands off to pick up my phone so i don't get my phone all dirty um, it is nice just to be able to kind of tap on the on the watch and be able to take a phone call so that is handy um, the notification system, um, I find very, very, very intuitive to use. I can turn off individual apps and have no notifications from them. I can set it up to mirror the notifications that I am currently getting on my iPhone, on my iPhone. And so the, the two work, you know, seamlessly together. So you can set it up to basically just mirror everything your iPhone does, or you can dial it in and dive deeper and individually turn on and off the, the notifications for all of the different apps that are on your watch. And that's another thing too to remember is that you don't have to have all the apps that are on your phone on your watch. You can pick and choose which ones uh, the phone will send over to the watch, which is also kind of a con and I'll get to that in a minute. So there is, you know, a large ecosystem around the Apple Watch 6, and there are a lot of apps for it, and it does more than just a typical fitness tracker. Whereas the BioStrap or the Aura, they're very, very focused. They're, they're you know, they, they, they track your activity, they give you a readiness or a recovery score, which is something that out of the box, the Apple Watch 6 will not do. Apple has, a lot, has launched Fitness Plus that works with the watch and either your iPhone or your iPad or your Apple TV. And I think that Apple is going in the direction of home fitness inside of their ecosystem um, by tying in all of the different you know, um, peripherals and technology that everybody's got. So, for example, when you launch Apple Fitness, the new subscription service, you know, you can choose from a plethora of different activities, whether it's bike, stationary bicycle, um, high intensity uh, training, core strength, dance, yoga, uh, there's a cool down, um, there's a few others in there as well. Your Apple Watch then becomes a live heart rate monitor in real time. And that data and information is displayed as a, in a heads up way in the corner of the screen as you follow along the fitness instructor. It all opens and launches seamlessly. The watch just links up to whatever gadget you're using to work out on. I didn't have any problems trying it out. If you do get a new Series 6 Apple Watch, you do get three months to try out App, uh, Fitness Plus, which is kind of nice. So you can figure out if you like it or not. And the nice thing is, is that if you don't like Fitness Plus, you can cancel it easily. And anyone that's ever gone to a gym and had to try and cancel a gym membership will know what, I, what a hassle that can be sometimes. Well, with Apple, you just go into your settings and just disable the, the, uh, the, the renewal on the, on, the, uh, on the monthly subscription. It's really, really easy. All of that said, Apple has almost all of the same sensor capabilities as the BioStrap Evo and the Aura Ring, minus the temperature sensor in the Aura. So 
you do have the hardware capability on your wrist with an Apple Watch 6 to capture all of the same biometric data that the BioStrap Evo or the Aura Ring minus the temperature, overnight body temperature. Um, but the way you go about getting all of that information may depend on the apps from the app store that you choose to download because like I said, out of the box, the Apple Watch 6 will not display the same level of detail about the biometrics of your body overnight, for example. And that gets into Apple's sleep tracking. Apple has now entered the realm of, of sleep tracking. With the advent of the Apple Watch 6, they also rolled out Watch OS 7, the operating system for the, wa for the watches, and iOS 14 for the iPhones. I've seen a lot of negative press about Apple and their sleep tracking mainly because everybody was kind of has been used to and expecting to see sleep stages number minutes in REM sleep minutes in deep sleep latency you know all of these metrics 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 data 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 and i don't really think it's fair for people to really be hitting apple that hard when it's like comparing apples to oranges apple isn't going in the same direction that a lot of other companies and app developers are going when it comes with regards to sleep apple isn't giving you a bunch of data in the morning to just pour over apple isn't giving you a sleep score apple isn't giving you a recovery score apple shows you time in bed time of sleep what your heart rate did overnight and if you met your uh your sleep goal which is the core tenet of what Apple is trying to achieve. Apple is trying to instill better before bed habits and use psychology rather than just giving you a bunch of data in the morning and saying, here's all your information, here's what your body did. Instead, Apple is trying to get users to think about winding down before they go to bed. So for example, when you set up your sleep schedule after you get your Apple Watch, you'll set up your, wake, your, uh, your bedtime and your wake up time. And then you can also set up a, a list of things that you would like to happen when, your bed, when you reach your bedtime. So some of these can be things like triggering your Philips Hue bulbs if you've got color changing bulbs in your house to switch from you know white light to yellow light or red light. Uh, you can have the... <clears throat> Uh, your iPhone, open up a meditation app, or start playing some relaxing music. And then once bedtime is actually met, when once that time actually comes, both your iPhone and your Apple Watch will pretty much lock themselves down and go into a do not disturb mode. Now, the Apple Watch actually is a pretty decent morning alarm. Um, when my wake up time hits in the morning, the watch buzzes kind of just kind of gently on my wrist, which is a really nice way to wake up versus, you know, blaring um, alarm, alarm sounds. So let me take a look here at my notes and see what else. Um, yes, the new Apple Watch 6 is water resistant. So you don't have to worry about going swimming, uh, going surfing, um, going in the shower, taking a bath. It's not a problem at all. Price. Price is definitely a consideration and a con for a lot of people when it comes to, to, to the Apple Watch Series 6 versus, say, their competitors in the fitness uh, tracking, uh, biometric, biohacking sphere. Um, the starting price for an Apple Watch Series 6 in the 42 millimeter size is $399, just with GPS and Wi-Fi, not cellular enabled. And if you want the cellular enabled 42 millimeter entry level model that'll set you back $499. If you want to go up to the 44 millimeter, the bigger of the two watches, that starts at $429 for Wi Fi and GPS only. The cellular option will bump you up to $529. And that brings me to another con is that it's Apple only. So in order to, to, to really to get an Apple Watch and enjoy the benefits of it, you already have to be an iPhone user. And there's no two bones about it. You can't get, a, get around this. Um, it, needs a, it needs an iPhone to pair to when you set it up initially. A lot of the features and a lot of the settings that you can tweak on the Apple Watch 6, you can really only do through the iPhone itself. Is it worth switching to Apple and getting an iPhone just so you can get an Apple Watch? I've never used a Samsung Gear 
uh, which it would be kind of an equivalent on the Android platform. Um, if you're perfectly happy on the Android platform, I don't think that a $399 smartwatch is going to be enough of a reason for you to completely change platform mobile platforms. Now, if you already own an iPhone and you don't have a bio strap or an aura ring, I think that the that the Apple Watch Series 6 makes a really compelling uh, case. It can do just about everything that the uh, BioStrap and the Aura can, provided you go on the App Store and you download additional applications and load them onto the watch for specific biometric and tracking features. One of the nice things about the Apple Watch Series 6 is if you do log a workout or you go for a run and you hit the start button on your run and you go for a run, that data will automatically be pulled and incorporated inside Aura's uh, mobile application. You open up the Aura app, you'll see imported from Apple Health, that workout or that run or that you know cycling. I think that if you already have an Aura ring, the Apple Watch might be a nice, um, a nice way to extend some of the features that you're already getting from the Aura because the Aura really isn't designed or built to be a fitness and workout tracker. I know a lot of people take off their Aura ring when they go to the gym because they don't want to tear it up, you know, when they're gripping barbells. You know, the bio strap, on the other hand, does have a lot of workout tracking built into it. And it also has the sleep tracking as well and the overnight recovery score. So, so if you're not interested in anything outside of fitness and working out and tracking that, I think the uh, bio strap Evo might be the way to go for you. But the Apple Watch is so much more than just a fitness tracker. As I said, it's basically like having a mini iPhone on your wrist. Every morning when I get up, there's a calendar notification if I've got any meetings coming up that day. Uh, text messages. I can send quick replies. I can dictate right to my watch and tell somebody, got it, I'll be on my way. Or if my phone is on silent and I get a phone call, my Apple Watch will, will vibrate to let me know that I'm receiving a phone call so I don't accidentally you know, miss a phone call because my phone's on silent. I've got a, an auto start for my car. I, I live in a cold climate. Um, I downloaded the uh, mobile app for my auto start and put it over onto my Apple Watch and now I can start my car from my wrist. Now, the Apple Watch Series 6 is supposed to get about 18 hours on a charge. Now, that's entirely dependent upon whether you have the cellular version or the Wi-Fi and GPS enabled version. 18 hours, probably best case scenario. I find that I get anywhere from about 15 to 18 hours. Depends on how much I use the watch and if I make any phone calls, because that really seems to drain the battery pretty fast. The good news on the other side of that con is that it only takes about 90 minutes to recharge the watch all the way to 100%. And you can get up to 80% charge in about an hour on the Apple Watch Series 6. I definitely think the Apple Watch Series 6 is Apple's best smartwatch to date. With the inclusion of blood oxygen, the ability to take an EKG, which is something I haven't already mentioned, but which is an electrocardiogram, which can detect uh, irregular heartbeats, on demand, you know, as I get older and I've got children of my own, I need to start taking better care of myself. Um, the Apple Watch will notify me of irregular heartbeats or um, abnormally high heart rate. Um, it also has fall detection, which is for me kind of a big deal. If I'm out on a ladder hanging Christmas lights and I fall and I'm unconscious, the watch will detect that fall. And if I don't, dismiss the uh, the alert on there that a fall was detected, it'll automatically call 911. If you're in the market for a fitness tracker and all you care about is fitness tracking, I think the BioStrap Evo is the way to go. If you're in the market for a sleep tracker, mainly to track your sleep and get detailed metrics on your sleep, I think the Aura Ring is really the way to go. If you're looking for more than just fitness and sleep and you're looking for basically something that, that'll help you in a bunch of different areas and expand the capabilities of your phone and allow you to not be completely tied to your phone but still get those critical alerts and messages, I think the Apple Watch is ideal. So if you're interested in the Apple Watch Series 6, there's going to be a huge blog article on alexfergus.com that dives in deep and does a serious deep dive into the Apple Watch 6 
all of the pros, all of the cons, what's new, possible use case scenarios, and how it compares to the BioStrap and the Aura. I'm Dave with AlexFergus.com. I hope you're having a wonderful day wherever you are. And until next time, I'll see you guys later. Thank you.